So when Ben Phoenix reached out to us and asked us if we wanted to take a look at their new Shogun case, of course I couldn't deny it. I mean, why wouldn't you want to take a look at a company's new flagship case? Well, in this video, rather than a full review, what we've done is we've done a full build in the system because to really get an idea of the case, I needed to build something in it. So in a later date, we're going to come out with a lot more in-depth looks on what we thought about the case itself. But for right now, we're focusing on this build. Now, we did go for a high-end uh, 4K gaming rig, but using a single GPU, and you'll get to those parts in just a minute, because we were going to go for a mainstream build, but once we started getting parts together, it felt more like a high-end gaming rig, and while just about any modern graphics card is going to run 1080p just fine, even 1440p is really not a stretch, we wanted to go for that 4K sweet spot of hitting 60 FPS or better. So that's what we've gone through. Now let me get out of the way here and we're gonna go through the parts list and then we're gonna take a look at what the final build looks like as well as some performance metrics. So let me get out of the way and get to those numbers. So starting a quick rundown on the parts we used, we started off with, of course, the BitPhoenix Shogun case along with using some BitPhoenix Alchemy LED RGB strips to help give a little bit of flair to this build. Moving on to the CPU, we went with the new KB Lake Intel Core i7-7700K and of course we will be overclocking it thanks to having it kept being kept cool by the Cooler Master Master Liquid Pro 280, which is a nice upgrade over the previously reviewed Master Liquid Pro 240 with, well, a larger radiator, larger fans, and nice sleeving along the tubes rather than just the FEP tubing. As far as memory, that'll be handled by 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z DDR4-3200. So not quite as fast as what uh, KB Lake is capable of, but still more than, uh, well, quite a bit more than just the base range. For motherboards, we'll be using the ASUS Z270 Maximus Hero, and you can see more information on that in the card below above. So we took a uh, pretty in-depth look at that motherboard already. Storage will be held entirely by SSDs using two OCZ Trion 150s. That's four, two 480 gig SSDs running in RAID 0. Well aware of the risk and more than happy to take it with this build. And as far as GPUs go, it's quite interesting. We were originally going to go with a Strix RX 480 to kind of round out the look of the build, but after playing around with this other card, I decided that we were going to go with the GeForce GTX 1080 Founders Edition, and we were going to target high-fidelity 4K gaming. So we'll get more into that as we go to the results. And all of this will be powered by our Corsair AX860i power supply. And all of this comes to a total of right around $2,200 US dollars. Now let's take a look at the finished product and see kind of how it came together.
Kicking things off in the performance category, we're going to take a look at CPU only first just to see what a difference it made of going from that base frequency up to 5 gigahertz on Cinebench R15. We got a multi score of 1001 versus the stock 987 and our single core went up to 215 over 193. It's quite fast already out of the box and you really you're not getting a huge improvement but you know, there's no reason to leave that performance on the table. What about Firestrike? What did it do for that? Well, at 4K with the GPU boosted an additional 200 megahertz and on the core and 500 megahertz on the memory that took our overall Firestrike Ultra score from 5130 all the way up to 5678. A nice little boost there, around 10% overall, which is good at that resolution because uh, 4K is pretty tough to drive. What about virtual reality enthusiasts? If you're looking for a VR mark score, our orange room results went from one from 11,334 up to 12,304, roughly a thousand point increase. Nothing to shake a stick at there. Well, what about actual gaming? Well, we didn't spend a whole lot of time on games, but what we did was look at some really popular games, running them at 4K high presets with no anti-aliasing because at 4K it's not really that big of a deal. However, high presets look good and Ultra is sometimes just a bear to run. Starting off with Doom, we went from an average of 69 FPS up to an average of 78 FPS with our minimum 1% 0.1% low staying well over 60 FPS once uh, once it's overclocked. I mean that experience on Doom at 4K was phenomenal. I actually had to tear myself away from playing it to make this video. Uh, what about Gears of War 4? Gears of War 4, we saw the average bump from 61 up to 70 FPS, and our minimum rose nearly 10 FPS, keeping it closer to that 60 FPS sweet spot. And last but not least, we're taking a look at Resident Evil 7. This is through the same benchmark that we did our performance review on. Now, we did leave a shadow caching on for this, for those wondering. And everything else was set to high with the anti-aliasing at FXAA because you cannot turn it off in this game. We took our averages from 60 FPS up to 68 FPS and our 0.1% lows from 49 up to 56. Once again, staying really close to that 60 FPS sweet spot. So as far as I'm concerned, we are 60 or well, pretty much we are 60 FPS average capable on this uh, 4K gaming setup. So there you have it. There's the performance metrics. Was it really worth overclocking the CPU? Not 100% sure on that, but we're going to be spending more time with that processor as soon as our delid kit comes in from Rocket Cool. So we're going to take some performance metrics once we delid it. We're working on those results right now for the pre. So our delid kit should be in soon. Thank you guys at Rocket Cool for that. That'll be really neat. Um, done delidding in the past. Excellent results back then so hopefully we'll get some really good results now now we know a lot of this uh, performance came from the gpu side of things but you got to push it with the processor so all in all if we had to give this computer a name i definitely would probably call it the name the nameless warrior because i'm terrible with names if you have a suggestion for a name go ahead and leave that down in the comments below here's something even more fun if there are parts on here that we put that you would have rather seen something different go ahead and drop those down there below because that's the great thing about pc gaming is there's a huge amount of combinations and there's a quite frankly some of you could have probably come out with a much better combination than what i did with the 2200 budget you can get a lot of graphics a lot of processor a lot of computer for that amount of money so this is what we did with this one very pleased with the performance it's actually quite a snappy computer uh, as far as gaming it's excellent yes probably would have done been better off with something like an asus strix um gtx 1080 but didn't have one or the funds just to go grab one for this video. So we worked with what we had and that's how we used the uh, Founders Edition. But definitely if I was doing this, I probably would have went with the Strix. Uh, but all in all, turned out really, really well. Let us know what you think about these. We'd like to do more of these in the future and hit different price points. Who's looking for different things? So if you enjoyed the video or you found it informative, please feel free to subscribe. Leave us a like and a comment and we will catch you all in the next video.